Hi, welcome to Solar Edge's Learning Lab Tech Tips. Today's tech tip is on troubleshooting isolation faults. So when you get to a site, before throwing a ladder, you're gonna to wanna to do the following. We're gonna go over to our inverter, turn off the toggle switch, wait for the DC energy to bleed out. After that, we're gonna turn off our DC safety switch. If you have a battery, let's go ahead and shut that off. So on our solar batteries, we're gonna turn the toggle off and then breaker. Turn off your solar breaker. With the battery off and everything de-energized, we can remove the covers. If the inverter doesn't look like a fishbowl and there's no water in it, let's continue looking for our isolation fault. Remove the top cover, inspect for damage or any debris. If everything looks good, we're gonna come down to the lower cabinet of our inverter. We're gonna remove our battery wires and our PV wire. With our PV wires removed, we are gonna test them an open air voltage. If those check out, land just one of the strings back in the inverter. With one of the strings landed in the inverter, replace the cover, turn the switch back on, and then my friend Chris is gonna show you the rest. Bring the inverter into production and connect with SolarEdge Setup. Go to Maintenance, Diagnostics, and then Isolation Status. This test is only valid if there is only one string landed in the inverter and there's an active isolation fault flagging. The inverter is going to give you a percentage. Multiply that percentage by the number of optimizers in the string to determine the approximate location of the leak. For example, if the inverter gives you a 40%, and you have 10 optimizers in the string, the leak is likely in the conductors or equipment around the number four slot optimizer from the DC positive side of the string. 0% indicates the fault is likely from the inverter through the DC positive home run up to the first optimizer. 100% indicates the same on the DC negative side. For more information, check out the link to the troubleshooting guide in the description below. Thanks, Chris. So if you do have to throw a ladder on the roof, here's the most common places to check. Your home runs, your J boxes, any field made MC4 crimps, if there's any critters chewing on cables and then damaged panels. All right, thanks for joining us.